What is up guys, in today's video I'm going to be talking about the Zeus Lightning Mythic and how you can stop losing to it in Fortnite Season 2. As always, if you guys do enjoy this video, remember to give it a like, subscribe if you like to see more, comment down below what you think of the Zeus Lightning Mythic item, and let's get right into it. So this video is going to focus mostly on zero build because that's what I make videos on. I know this item is significantly more annoying in build mode, and also... Some gameplay in this video will be clips of me fighting the Zeus Lightning, but it's hard to get just like 10 minutes or more footage of me just beaming people out of the air using it, you know, because not every fight has somebody using it. This has been the main item that I have seen most complaints about this season since the launch of it. And like past items like the Deku Smash, the Kamehameha, the Hollow Purple, these items are all different, but they can be super annoying to play against, but they also have a few key weaknesses. That I think kind of bait people into playing, taking risks versus it. So the the Zeus Lightning is a bit different than these other items because its damage comes in three stages as the player throws the three lightning bolts. But I think it's very similar in the sense that like it's an item that puts the user up in the air in a, a somewhat vulnerable state while they complete an animation. And if they complete the animation, then they get to output massive damage. But they are incredibly vulnerable during that animation because they can't really defend themselves and they're not actually outputting much damage. So how most people view this and choose to deal with it, and this is going to kind of be the trap that I think a lot of people fall into, is they think of, okay, this player is going to go high up in the sky with no cover, be very exposed. I'm just going to kill them before they get it off. And then, you know, it won't be a problem. And that can definitely work. But oftentimes in that situation, you're basically opting into a fight where it's all or nothing. If you kill them before they get it off, great. If you fail to kill them before they get it off, then you probably are going back to the lobby. And it basically creates like a damage race. If you can beat, if you can, you know, get their health to zero before they get it off, you win. If you don't get their health to zero before they get it off, you lose. And I think this is the primary reason why so many people struggle against this item is that they think they have to opt into this damage race every single time and that's just like their main instinct or the first thing they think about when fighting this item and sometimes it can be good to opt into that like it's a fine play and i think sometimes it's really not uh the times where i would want to go for it like i don't think it's always bad to try to go for the kill there are some times where i'd want to but i think just being of the mindset that like I always need to kill them before they get it off is the problem. So the times where I would want to go for this like kind of situation where I'm just going to beam them out of the air is if I already have them weak. This will happen like somewhat often if someone just like panics when you're fighting them and they have this in their item or in their inventory. They you get some damage on them and then they just like know that they're losing the fight. So they kind of try to use the lightning as a bailout. If you already have them weak, it makes it much easier to like eliminate them before they get it off another time you might want to kind of opt into that damage race is if you're already looking at them and you know where they are and you kind of see them using the item as they start to use it like the first two kind of go hand in hand where like if you have them weak already you're probably already watching them but there will be times where like maybe you know someone is behind a tree or a rock and you kind of see them start to use it at that point it's going to be much easier for you to get that elimination before they get it off also if i have an ar with the sight on it if it's somewhat mid-range like if you're close range this doesn't really matter but like let's say someone is 50 ish meters away maybe more maybe less and then they also go up into the air which is going to make them further away i wouldn't really want to try to just fight that and kind of flip the entire game on whether or not i get that elim if i have like the green floor loot warforged ar with no sight on it you know if i have my custom warforged ar with a sight on it or like the Ares mythic then like I'm probably going to be more likely to take that fight. But if I have like the ground loot, third person, bloom based ones, I don't want to be taking that fight as much. Also, just in general, if you're very confident in your own aim, then you're probably going to be able to kill them before they get it off. But if you aren't the best player or you don't have the best aim, or you're not the most confident in your aim, this, it could just be a trap that you fall into over and over again and keep losing to the lightning. And I think that's another reason why a lot of people lose to this item is they see like, good players beam the person out of the sky and say like oh it's so easy to just kill them before they get it off and that's true for somebody that has very good aim but if your aim isn't very good and everyone keeps telling you it's easy to beam them before they get it off and then you keep losing to it it's just making your games harder so 
I think all these conditions are super simple in terms of like whether or not I'm going to fight it. And it just basically boils down to making it take less time to kill the opponent. And that kind of increases the chances that you'll kill them before they get it off. You know, if you're already looking at them and you don't have to find them, it's not going to take as long for you to get that elim. If you already have them weak, obviously it's going to take less time for you to get that elim. If you have good aim, it's going to take less time. If you have a good AR with like an accurate sight on it, it's going to take less time. And so the inverse of these are also true. If the opponent is full HP or you just like don't know anything about their HP because you haven't shot at them yet, you might want to consider whether or not you're opting into that fight. You know, like if you bodied someone with snipe and you know you just did 100 plus damage to them and then they go up into the air, you know that person's really weak. But if you know nothing about their HP, you might want to think twice about it. And I think the biggest thing that should deter you from wanting to opt into this fight is going to be that you don't know where they are or you didn't see them use it. Like let's say you're in a fight and you eliminate the player that you're fighting and then you hear somebody else using the lightning nearby. And so now, like, you know there's somebody using lightning. You probably have an idea of where they are based on audio. But you're not already looking at them. And they're already starting the animation. So that time that it takes for you to, like, find them and then get on target and start shooting is less time that you have to, you know, eliminate them before they get it off. Because you didn't know they were using it until they were already using it on you, you know? It's very different if you watch someone start to use it versus you hear somebody using it near you and you know that you're the target but like you you're just the time you have to react and actually deal damage to them is decreased significantly if you have to actually react to it and you don't already know where they are you know so if you don't already see the person it's probably best to just like not take that fight and then again like i said if you're not the most confident in your aim i think it's best not to force the fight and that's why i think so many people kind of struggled with this like i said where they hear and see other people talk about how easy it is to deal with. And so they think they have to force that solution of getting the kill before the person gets it off. But they don't really know the conditions that they should be fighting it versus not fighting it. So again, I already talked about this, but just to recap, if you have them weak and you see them using it and you already know where they are, it might be a good idea to fight it, especially if you have a good weapon and you're confident in your aim. If you didn't see them start to use it and you don't know what their HP is like and you're going to have to find them in the sky, it's probably best to just not take that trade and not opt into that damage race, you know? I think the most consistent way to stop losing to these mythics is to just use mobility once you hear the person using it and then fight them when they're done using it. Obviously, this is reliant on you getting mobility items like shockwaves, wings, or like even the zero point dashes. But if you have any of these items, just using mobility and repositioning while they are using it and then shooting them in like the back or side if possible while they're looking at where you used to be can be one of the easiest plays and it's just a much easier way to react to somebody using it like if you're going to fight them and you don't know where they are you have to find them and then start shooting them if you don't know where they are and they're using it on you and your decision is just to shockwave away it doesn't matter you you hear someone using it you twitch your shockwaves you shockwave away and then you're chilling and then you can you know try to turn that fight um, and I think that is what your instinct should be. I think your instinct should just be to use mobility and reposition and then, you know, survive that fight and get a normal fight where they're not using the lightning unless one of those ideal conditions arises. If you have one of those ideal conditions, then sure, fight it. But if it's not already an ideal condition for you, just have the instinct of using mobility to reposition. And I think your win rate versus this item is going to be kind of much better. If I do know where they are when I shockwaves, sometimes like going right at them or under them can work quite well. And it also worked quite well versus the other items I talked about before, the Deku Smash, the Kamehameha, the Hollow Purple. But the timing of this can somewhat be like weird because like if they haven't thrown any bolts yet and you shockwave right at them, then they maybe have time to like react to you and just look straight down, you know? But if you haven't, like if they've already thrown a bolt or two and you shockwave at them or maybe you shockwave to the side, they've thrown two bolts and use another to shockwave at them. If you can fight them like as they're falling from the animation, uh, I, I feel like it's just a very awkward fight for the lightning user and a very easy fight for you, uh, especially if you're able to just like pull out your shotgun and hit them as they're falling. So that is sometimes something I will do where like they're lightning me, I'll shockwave away. And then after they've thrown two bolts, then I shockwave kind of like at them and catch them when they're falling down the same was true with the kamehameha or the deku smash like the when they're dropping from the animation I, I feel like the person that was previously using the lightning 
is pretty vulnerable. You can also just shockwave to the side and kind of, if you know where the person is, see whether or not they're looking at you and then kind of start to beam them, get some damage on them while they're in the animation and then shockwave at them to finish the kill once they're done with it. If they didn't, uh, you know, if you didn't kill them out of the air. So I just think mobility is the easiest solution to counter the Zeus lightning. And I think it's been the easiest solution to counter the items that worked very similarly in the past. I also think with the weapons becoming projectile based this season, it makes it a bit harder to just like easily beam people out of the air. And then the same is true of attachments. Like in chapter four, if you found a red eye AR, then you had the site on it, you know, whereas now you either have to find a warforged AR with a site on it or visit the workbench. Uh, and so it just kind of decreases your chances, I think, of having one of those like red dot ARs. Some other like easy counters to the Zeus lightning bolt is going to be shield bubbles because the lightning does not penetrate the shield bubbles. It'll just bounce off. Uh, the shield bubble can expire over time, but if you throw it when the person kind of starts to use it, your bubble should last longer than their Zeus lightning animation. And then same with cars. Uh, cars actually protect you from the lightning. So this can be another potential solution if you're somebody who uses the cars anyways like I am. Uh, and this is kind of provided your car is healthy enough to survive them throwing the lightning at it because the lightning does do a good amount of damage. But if you have a full HP car, you should be fine. And even if they do blow up your car, I believe the last lightning bolt does like 120 damage. And a car blowing up on you does like 50. So like if you had to choose to take 120 damage or choose to take 50, I think most people are going to choose to take 50. Uh, I think snipers can work well versus the lightning when the person is up in their animation, but they are kind of like moving around a bit when they're in the animation. And this kind of comes back to what I talked about before, where like if you're very confident in your sniper aim and you know, you're a good sniper, then sure, you can maybe just snipe them while they're in the animation. But like... If you're someone who's like 3 out of 10 on your sniper aim, you hit some shots but you're not very confident with it and then everyone is telling you to just snipe them and then you opt into that fight where your aim isn't very good, I just don't think it's the best and I think that's why so many people struggle with this item is that like kind of other people and the discussion within the community is kind of misleading them. One final thing I wanted to touch on is that the lightning user can actually use zero point dashes while in air uh, while using lightning. So like the person using it isn't always the sitting duck this season because if they do have those zero point dashes they can just dash around while using the lightning and make themselves a much harder target to hit so that is something that you might need to keep in mind when fighting this user if you're in the underworld biome or if you think they have the cerberus medallion uh, you might want to think twice about shooting them at the very least just kind of know that this is a thing so you're not like completely caught off guard if it does happen to you but that is going to be it for this video. I hope you guys found this helpful, informative, interesting. As always, if you did, remember to give it a like, subscribe if you'd like some more, and comment down below what you think of the Zeus Lightning Mythic. And I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.